Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to our Thursday program. That is the, the joke of the week. We are a little behind due to some technical difficulties on my end. I apologize for that, but those are all taken care of and we'll be on task on program for next week. But for now, let's just get into this talk about salvation. On Sunday, we've been talking about building a personal relationship with God. And you can only build a personal relationship with God after you've entered into a relationship with him. That entering in is salvation. That's accomplished by the cross. That's accomplished by Jesus. That's accomplished by Emmanuel. That's accomplished by the blood, which we're going to talk more about today. But what we've talked about so far is that Jesus is he who will save his people from their sins. And by that we mean from ourselves, the mistakes we do, the consequences of our mistakes, those that cause us to commit mistakes, and that which is within us, our flesh, that brings us into temptation to make mistakes. Jesus has come to deliver, that is save, his people from their sins. We can put an amen to that. And that salvation, a beautiful part of it, the essential aspect of it, when we've entered into it, is the presence of God, Emmanuel, God with us, in our lives, namely the presence of the Holy Spirit. And who doesn't want God, the Holy Spirit, in your life, at your beck and call, so to speak, that when you pray, God is there, that he guides you, that he instructs you. It says in Isaiah, you will hear a voice behind you in that day. This is the way. Walk in it, guiding, helping. Who doesn't want that personal relationship with God? But that can only happen after salvation. Salvation has many aspects. We've been dealing with a few of them, introducing the general problem. And today, we're going to talk about the blood. One topic, two aspects. I almost did a three there. The blood. The blood. Let's take a look here in a beautiful communion passage from Matthew chapter 26, verses 27 to 29. Jesus, in the gospel of Matthew, we have some of his most delicate and beautiful teachings. We have the Beatitudes. We have the various teachings in the Sermon on the Mount, turn the other cheek, etc. So famous, so wonderful. The Lord's Prayer from Matthew chapter 6. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about self. Sufficient to the day is the trouble. There are beautiful, amazing verses. He has a teaching he gives before he goes to the cross. And that's what we find here in Matthew chapter 26. Verses 27 to 29 is the communion teaching. And there is an aspect here of our faith. There is an essential item of our faith here that Jesus wants us to put trust in the blood. And it's something we can be ashamed of. It, it has an image of, of violence in it, an image of pain in it. And it's so fitting for this season. We're coming near Christmas. So we think of Jesus, the baby in the manger having the blood to shed, God become man. And we're coming to Remembrance Day. We think of those who gave their lives, who paid the ultimate price, their blood, for our freedom, the price of our peace. And that reminds me of Jesus the Nazarene, who paid the price for our peace, his blood. We can never be ashamed of the blood. So let's talk about why it's essential. Today, it'll be very simple, very quick. Let's take a look. Matthew 26, verses 27 to 29. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink anew with you. In my Father's kingdom. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. I want to read that again so we can hear it. My blood, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. I want to zero in for the forgiveness of sins. I skipped a few essential and critical words there, but I want to talk about the forgiveness of sins. There's two aspects to the blood this Friday that I want to talk about. The first is the forgiveness of sins. Salvation is we in our estranged relationship with God, having that mended, having that fixed, 
having peace, having forgiveness, having ourselves restored to childlike innocence. That's salvation, deliverance, rescue, restoration, all these good things. Forgiveness. And the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. The blood is a necessary ingredient in our salvation. It is something Jesus willingly gave. It is something he made mention of. It is something he taught about as central. And he enshrined it in one of his commands he gave to his people. This do in remembrance of me. What am I to remember Jesus? The blood. The blood that I shed on the cross for the forgiveness of sins. For the forgiveness of sins. Through the shedding of blood, sins are forgiven. In the Old Testament law, the animals, their blood, it was sprinkled on the altar. The blood was poured out, and through the blood, there was forgiveness of sins. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death, and the gift of God is eternal life. The only thing that can pay the price of forgiveness is the blood. The blood brings that in, but that brings us to the second aspect. So this is the first. Blood is necessary for the forgiveness of sins. You have to hear that. Blood is necessary for the forgiveness of sins. And this has to do with the fact of the price of sins. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. You see, when we talk about forgiveness, there's many ways to think about it. But generally, someone is forgiven when the suffering is sufficient to pay for the crime done. When you think of someone who has done a heinous crime and we say, well, we'll lock them away forever, etc. And people say, well, that's not enough. They can't suffer enough to undo the harm they have done. There's no forgiveness because they can't suffer enough. But then we think maybe of our family, of our children, if, if they wrong us, if they hurt our feelings. If they, they don't need to restore and restitute everything. If they simply say sorry. That suffering of them saying sorry, that acknowledgement of wrong, them going through that humbling process, that suffering is sufficient for their forgiveness. And so we see that God had set the price of sin, the just price of sin, as death. The wages of sin is death. And so in order to forgive, you needed something to pay the price of death. And the Bible says that the life is in. The blood. So by the blood, the price of sin, death, was paid and it was neutralized. And then death has no hold on you. Hallelujah and amen. Praise God. The blood within it has the life. And that life pays the price of the forgiveness of your sins. Death. That's aspect number one of the blood. It's central. We can't forget it. It's the forgiveness of sins. It's the price paid to equalize the accounts and to set us free. But there's more than that. That's one aspect of the blood that Jesus talks about. The other aspect of the blood is not just the payment by the life, but the progression of the life. There's a payment, life, in place of death. But then there's a, pro a progression to eternal life because it's the life of God. The life of Christ paid on the cross for your sin and for my sin. God truly suffered there for you and for me. And Jesus, through the blood, he says there's another part to it. You're going to drink it anew with me in my Father's kingdom. Eternal life. Eternal life. That's the critical secondary aspect here. Our salvation, the blood pays the price of our sin. But there's an overflow. There's an abundance of blood. There's an abundance of life in Christ because Jesus has, says the Bible, an indestructible life. He cannot be held in the pangs of death. The Father raised him from the grave. And so there is life sufficient for you and for me to have eternal life. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. There is no salvation without the blood. There's no forgiveness of sin. There's no promise of heaven without the blood. The blood is what sustains us. The blood is what protects us. The blood is what keeps us. 
The blood is what covers us. Without the blood, we cannot be new. Without the blood, we cannot be changed. Without the blood, there is no place for us. Apart from the blood, we are still in our sin. Without the pledge of the blood, there is no heaven for you. And for me, the blood is essential. And we can never be ashamed of the blood of Jesus, my friends. I hope that as we go towards Sunday, as we approach the Christmas season and the coming weeks, we reflect on the importance and the central aspect of the blood of Jesus Christ in your life. Do you plead the blood, my friends, when you pray? Do you think of the blood and the significance of the blood and ask it to cover you? For as far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed your transgression from you. And that's all because of the blood of Jesus Christ. That's not my word. That's Jesus' word. It's the blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Take care, my friends. Have a fantastic week. Meditate on that Bible truth. And God bless.